Hey, hey, what is going on, guys? This is the SS Ultimate Goku back with another video to talk about the uh, news about the last or Avatar: The Last Airbender uh, Netflix live-action series and some of the updated news, uh, as well as the stuff that we kind of know at this time. Um, so uh, with me also. Uh, we haven't had him on here for a while, but we, uh, brought him back, uh, Richard Cora Kenobi, aka the Jedi Bender, who is also just as much as a fan of, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender as I am. How have you been, man? I've been hanging in there, bro. Thank you for having me back on. It, it does feel like forever, but I'm happy we're collaborating again, and yes, absolutely. I, uh, aside from yourself, I do consider myself a pretty big Avatar fan, so... I've been interested to see what's been going on with this show. Yes, it's um, it, it's absolutely, ever since they made the announcement, uh, I think it's been about a year now since they made the announcement, there's been kind of a little vague information that's been going on. I, they recently had the they had the thing that came out with the uh, uh, APA uh, uh, thing that they, they showed on, on the tweet, I believe it was, um, uh, which I thought was a very good uh, CGI, but that's... So far, all the stuff we've seen so far, besides like some of the little, um, the little uh, the dress ups with some of those uh, people that they hired, which I made that video not knowing that at the time, uh, which you I corrected me in the comment section about that, but um, so yeah, that's that's kind of some of the little tidbits that uh, we had, but uh, there's no real confirmation so far of the, the castings yet of, of, of the guy, of, of the people that, uh, for the, the Netflix series. As far as I know, yes, uh, there, there hasn't been any, any casting, um, and they were supposed to start casting very soon, I believe. Yeah, and, uh, I'm afraid maybe it might be even delayed more now with this, uh, with the, the coronavirus uh, issue, so it might be a little bit longer uh, before we hear anything, unfortunately. Um, but I still am very positive in the production, and uh, I'm, ver I'm very hopeful this series is going to do good, because obviously, as we all know, the, the original movie didn't do uh, anything uh, good casting-wise and uh, uh, storytelling-wise. Um, so I'm very, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, very, very hopeful for this to be uh, very good, but a lot of the, um, a lot of the things too, um, because I am very curious at, at some of the, the elements that they're going to add to this. To this, because obviously um, with Netflix, it's usually around twelve episodes per uh, season, um, uh, so it's going to probably be broken down from season one. Season one is probably going to be broken down into two different uh, seasons, uh, and so you're probably going to have like a long drawn out C, uh, C, uh, series uh, from in between the the three the three uh, the three uh, seasons of, of the original uh, anime cartoon series uh, but uh, yes yes but, uh, that that's how I think they're gonna and that's a very smart idea because that was kind of the biggest problem all of us you and myself included did, that the movie had it tried to cram the whole first season into two and a half hours and it, it clearly couldn't do that so them separating season one into two seasons right off the bat i think that's a smart idea oh yeah absolutely um and so i am too because it's like you know we got the original creator involved obviously they're not gonna do it the way the other movie did it um and they're gonna kind of approach it better and i um i'm really hopeful for it and um and also with some of the the new stuff that's uh some of the little teasers and stuff even uh I believe uh, Dante uh, had uh, talked about uh, something, had teased something, but obviously if he's involved, he's not going to say anything about it. Um, but I am curious about that. If you would, uh, if you think possibly any of the, the original voice actors or any of those people that were involved in the original uh, Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon show uh, would possibly uh, be in this in some capacity, whether in their old parts or in a different part, uh, so to speak. I would imagine that they would probably be in, in a, uh, handing uh, the torch off to these newer actors, whoever they end up picking, and if they are involved, they're most likely going to be 
in cameo roles or maybe one of the supporting actors yeah. or, or maybe one of the actors will be in a main supporting role or they could even be uh, the villain. No, uh, that would be kind of interesting if Dante was the Fire Lord Ozai. <laughs> yes, uh, I think that would be that would be very genius to have the original Zuko be the Fire Lord. Um, but I would also be okay if they... Uh, but I, obviously, I, I don't think I would say no to them getting Mark Hamill to come back to reprise his role. Um, oh, yeah. w- w- whether they get him to actually don the Fire Lord persona in live action, or they just have him come back in a voiceover capacity. Yeah, that'd be that'd be really interesting too. Because I was even thinking that too. Like, like, what if like for Zuko? Like, I mean, I, I, I they probably won't do this, but I was I was thinking maybe you have uh, Dante as like the voice of Zuko, but you have a stand and act like kind of like a Dark Vader type whole idea where you have the voice, but you don't. You have like a stand-in actor, but I, I think that would be kind of a little tough since Zuko doesn't have a mask on like uh, like Dark Vader has. But it's uh, something that's not possible in in this day and age. But that was another idea I thought. No. I could totally see if they if they wanted to if Dante and Brian really wanted to um, hook us and get us to watch it. I, I could see them getting some of the actors who can still pull off those characters, like Grey Delisle Don- and Dante Bosco, to do some voiceover for the characters while just having the actors be the bodies of those characters. But, I, I, again, I, I don't know at, um, if they would go down that route because I'm I'm very certain that Michael and Brian... I'm sorry, excuse me. Yeah, uh, Dante and Brian would want to pretty much take this in a different direction. I think they would want to give these new actors the spotlight and give them a chance to shine. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I don't, I, I, like I said, I don't expect, I don't expect every, I'm, I'm, I'm almost imagining not every actor that was involved in the original Avatar is going to be involved in this, but it, it'd be cool if you got one or two maybe to, to do some role because that would definitely, I think, craw, tra- draw some type of buzz uh, with it too. When helping get this thing, you know, going where it needs to go. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, some of the, you know, getting some of the new actors out there and would definitely, you know, uh, create even more to the Avatar, you know, lore, especially as it goes into live action. But I am definitely looking forward to see how they approach the the water bending, the air bending. The, the earth bending the the fire bending how they do those effects Cause obviously with with C- CGI and all the special movie f- uh, effects that they do now there's so many different things you can do and I feel like especially in the in the in the in the crappy movie they were really you know the way they they did some of those effects you know it was it was very very cheesy and it, it just was like kind of they just kind of did the certain things and then just kind of you know, went cheesy in, like, a next scene, and that was another thing that I had also a problem with the effects parts of that, uh, of that movie, the, the bad movie, uh, and I feel like you could do a lot more if you, if you, if you do it right, if you do the effects right, but, I mean, we've seen it with a lot of these Marvel movies and DC movies, uh, even, um, where, you know, you can do all these different little effects, and obviously the elements are, are basic elements and stuff like that, so there's definitely different effects you can approach with this series as well too so i think there's a lot of very interest in the effect parts of that i think so too um i know they have said that they were going to approach this very much how they did in the animated show and that is bring back some of the choreographers uh to do the choreography uh for the bending and and try and get as much uh, VFX to match the quality of this because since uh, this has to translate into live action instead of animation it does mean that they're going to have to put even more time and effort to make sure that uh, the effects match up with the choreography and all that but I'm very confident that Netflix is going to give them a good budget to where they can pull off uh, the earth, the water the fire and the air bending no problem as long as 
they don't rush it and they really pay attention to how the choreography is done because that's what ultimately makes the bending. I believe that's what yeah. the live action movie was lacking. It didn't understand that some most of these bending elements are derived from martial arts. Absolutely. And th- th- these are martial arts moves that are going that are essentially being turned into into elemental bending. So I think that if they if they do that, if they if they really take their time with the choreography and they match it up uh, with the awesome VFX, I think uh, it, they could translate it very well because uh, there have been some Avatar fan films that have been able to do it uh, very, Absolutely. very good, and they may not be uh, an, a, an, uh, a blockbuster film, but if a fan film can can, def- can do it, then I'm sure Netflix themselves could handle this challenge yeah absolutely absolutely and you know also they need to also make sure one thing happens and that is the kiyoshi water warriors are actually in this and not get cut out <laughs> yeah absolutely i i hope they are i i think they will yes uh, i i think we will see the kiyoshi warriors in this yeah and also too there you know because this is because this is a live action perspective there are um there are things that might be added into the into the episodes that weren't exactly in the cartoon series that you know still kind of is a part of it, but we never seen it on screen. Like they might add like you know some of the those, the comic books, like some of the the Lost Adventures, uh, you know the Lost Adventure episode comic book. They they had that, and you could add something like that, or add like some type of behind the scenes type things that we don't really see on screen in between the episodes but you kind of you kind of uh you get that in in these live action episodes there's some of that stuff you could probably put in here too uh with this cuz it's in live action but um but like the the special the special effects like um you could uh definitely add different you know you could add different like uh things that weren't necessarily in the 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 ser- like that weren't exactly in this like dialogue that wasn't exactly in the series in the cartoon series and add it to this live action because it's a different element of it's a different element uh of such so like you know like lost adventures of avatar comic book you know you could have that type of event be like kind of incorporated in here with uh Toph and boom uh king boomy if you get that far have that in there uh have like you know different little stuff that wasn't necessarily addressed in the in the cartoon, but you knew about it. You knew about it um, because it was in between episodes, and it was kind of those mysteries that would get resolved later on. You could like show that here. You could show that here, and like you know, kind of address those things that uh, that you didn't see in the cartoon. Because obviously, when you're doing this live action, it's not necessarily going to be just this kind of kid friendly like. Um, series i feel like this is gonna be a little more mature a uh, more of a mature one because it's in live action but still will probably obviously be for all ages but still you can add more of that little more maturity to this i think uh, too i think that's another perspective too i think they're gonna go in that kind of uh direction as well with it uh yeah i absolutely agree with you man uh, well since it's going since netflix has their series be generally uh around 50 to 60 minutes i think this will give them enough time and i think that's what they've really been trying to really nail in approaching the series again is now they're not limited by the standard 22 minute runtime and they can tell more stories with this extended runtime that they couldn't do in the animated show and i also do believe that yes you are right this this we will be able to see some maturity in this one uh we may even get to see things uh that they wanted to do that they ended up doing in legend of korra maybe now with netflix they could do that like they could tackle some mature themes and just uh just to further uh develop these characters in a way that they couldn't do the first time around. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think I think it would be perfect to kind of kind of explain more of these characters even better and be even more in depth. You know, the struggles Katar and Aang had, even control. You know, the the, the joking of of Sokka and kind of his development and what he brings. You know, you can you kind of kind of explore you can explore that even more. Even when Toph ever gets introduced, you have more in depth stuff you can introduce to to these characters, which I think will also benefit too. Uh, to these characters as well, so I, I I'm really looking forward to seeing stuff like that as well too. Oh yeah, yeah. The the one thing I'm looking fight forward scenes too. to longer fights. Yes, no, yes, that that's true. Well, the one thing I'm looking forward to with the level of maturity is how they will, uh, in, how they will incorporate Aang's reaction to seeing that he is indeed the last Airbender as he. <laughs> seeing his reaction and really getting a more feeling for him than we did because it, we did understand what he felt in the cartoon and it was very daring for them to show uh, skeletons and just really emphasize that they're dead but it'd be interesting to see th uh, them take it a step further uh, in a way that they probably couldn't do on so, television back then yeah and also, he'll be actually called Ang, not Ung, too. Yes. Uh, well, also, too, the fighting. Yes, like you said, the fighting. Uh, fighting, too. I longer think... fight scenes. Like, well, you yeah, can get yeah, more no. of that, too. Uh, I, I, I think the fights are definitely going to be better improved uh, because the episodes will be longer. And since they are bringing back most of the original crew, which does include some of the choreographers who did the bending, uh, who choreographed it, I think we'll also be able to see uh, Avatar bending fights in a, or non-bending fights in a way that I think fan films have done a good job of uh, showing us but with with it, but with Michael and Brian, they can really just uh, hammer it home on how good these fight scenes are because Netflix has had some great fight scenes in their shows, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the how the fights look uh, and feel in this new iteration. Yeah, absolutely, and um, like I said, I think it would be uh, really good for that, and it will add more depth to it. Um, like I said, like uh, more, uh, and also, also too. I mean, especially in season one, they could really. You know, because obviously they don't really show Azula that much in the first season. As a matter of fact, she's not really even introduced really until until towards the end of season one, and then really kind of gets out in uh, season two. You could really kind of explore more of that, you know, uh, in season one, uh, rather than you know not wait until the end. You can really kind of show what she's doing, uh, even while all this stuff is going on in season one. Uh, obviously, we know who uh, uh, Fire Lord Ozai. Fire Lord, o we know who Fire Lord Ozai is at this point. Obviously, Fire Lord Ozai was never shown until season three. Like you know, his face pretty much uh, wasn't shown, uh, and so you can really obviously we know who he is. So we we don't really need <laughs> to not know what he looks like. Um, so. Yeah, no. Well, that does lead into a, to something I was also curious about myself, like the development of the, the, to make Fire Lord Ozai an even more compelling villain than he was in the original. Because that is the one thing I think everybody universally agrees on, is that when they when we finally did get to see Ozai's face, and we found out why he's wanting to take over the Fire Nation, and why he, he's done what he's done, wiping out the Avatar, making sure that there wouldn't be an Avatar, killing all the air... Uh, let, uh, just essentially uh, running the world the way he has, it was just because he's evil. So that would be something I would like them to, for Michael and Dante to be able to do better this in this iteration, is really just give us a backstory on Ozai and show us why he is doing what he's doing and just make him a compelling villain. Yes. That isn't just doing this because he's evil and he wants world domination. I, I feel like you could add layers to him, 
uh, because Azula was the only villain in Avatar that had good layers to her. Yeah, she and was there consistent. Was a, yes. She was consistent, and that's another thing, too, is, like, maybe even, also, too, the uh, Zuko's mother. Obviously, we know more about Zuko's mother from the comic book, but you can really put that in here. You, you have enough time to put that in there. You can, because most of the stuff that's introduced in the comic book is pretty much stuff that happened in the television series that was never explored they never well it wasn't happen it didn't happen in the television but it happened in that time well, you know what i mean you know what I mean? it happened in there and like you could show that you can like actually show that in here and kind of you know because that was always that was one of the biggest mysteries until we had that comic book uh is what happened to his mother zuko's mother and you can you can really kind of explore that as well too I, I think so, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't. Ex uh, I'm not expecting them to have an episode that explains what happened to her, but I am expecting them to really uh, show her from Zuko and Azula's perspective, and also Ozai's, and just really, you know, make her more fleshed out, uh, and just just make her disappearance really hit home for both Zuko and Azula because. That, that is the one thing that, like you said, that it wasn't addressed in the original show because they hadn't got to it yet, was uh, Azuma in the original series. So, but we knew that her disappearance had an impact on Zuko and Azula, and we know her, and, and we know she had a huge uh, more on Azula than Zuko, so I would really like them to yeah. just flesh that out yeah it, it, show it, it, us more of the dynamics between uh azula zuko and ozai to kind of get their perspectives on her yeah because it, it it's like it's um it, it really is one of those things where like you know the mother you know it, i felt like especially after knowing what happens to uh, uh zuko's mother in the comic book at the comic book the face stealer. So with the uh, with the face stealer, um, that was um, with the uh, with the comic book of um, uh, of the face stealer uh, steal uh, or steal or she took uh, a zoo, or or took Zuko's uh, mother's face away from her in the comic books, and that's something that they could probably since that was a prequel to the events of avatar the last airbender they could probably talk about that as well too uh in in kind of touch up a little bit on that in this live action series too because of all the extra time they're going to have you think about something like that um i would like that <laughs> i won't lie um with the extra time i think it gives them plenty of ways to really uh go in depth and add more layers to these characters than there already were, but if they can't do that in the main season, then I definitely wouldn't mind a Netflix special going over what happened with Zuko's mom and having it really explore um, her journey uh, in, in what she had to go through. I, I think there are a lot of limitless potentials on how they could go there, so I'd be up for seeing it. Yeah, I think it would be it would be good. There's a lot of like I said. There's the like we've said already, and all a lot of uh, and the other stuff we've said earlier is there's a lot of there's a lot of different possibilities um to go with with the series, and, uh, and like I said, there's a lot more you can tell. A lot of different screen time, you know, because they're hours and. Uh, one hours rather than half hours, so there's a lot of different screen times you could do. Um, are there any? Uh, you no, know, it's kind of early to talk about uh, uh, casting, um, but we kind of we kind of touched up on some of the possible voice actors coming back. But is there any uh, possibility you would think of uh, the uh, the um, some of the actors possibly potentially getting some of these parts on who you'd possibly see? as a potential candidate for any of these characters? Um, I would like to see some of the actors come back uh, in some capacity. Yeah, we talked about I that. definitely... Yeah, we did. We talked about this. Uh, 
But um, I just think the biggest one I'd like to see is Dante Bosco uh, play the play the Fire Lord. And yeah, we talked really, about it earlier. It was yeah, 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 we did. Yeah. Um, but is there any like is there any like outside uh, actors though too? Not just like some of the voice actors coming back too, but would any potential like. Uh, seeing like someone of the others like coming, you know, outside of the, like a regular type of actor. Is there anyone you uh, would uh, think of that you think would be like, oh damn, this person would be really good for the. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, that's a that's a that's kind of a hard thing to decide. Um, I, I I could see just about almost anybody play these characters. I would have to. Just wait and see. I don't think I can come up with any predictions or um, any fantasy castings that I'd like to see because it's because these these characters have to be really brought to life. I think yeah. it would be better to wait and see who are picked to play the characters and just okay. see if they can nail it. Uh, oh, but if it's somebody that I'm familiar with then I think they could definitely knock it out of the park. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's... Um, I also do think it really is, as I'm really hoping that we're going to get a true uh, take on these characters uh, when they are casted. Uh, casted. But um, I would like to see them get someone that, you know, is, like, going to be really good, but maybe we'll uh, get to see someone that we might know, possibly... That would make realistic sense, obviously, with that character. But it's one of those where it's like, oh, that uh, you know, that actor, like, oh yeah, you know, that might actually work. Um, and hopefully, it's just not someone that's just completely out of left field, like in the in the in the movie, because obviously that <laughs> wasn't uh, the way to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of the things too, and I, I haven't uh, we haven't talked about that. I, I cannot wait to see how, um, especially with the way CGI is these days, I can't wait to, to see these the, the animals that they try to do and try to put these, like we already like I said, we've already seen the thing uh, with the bison, uh, early like p pictures of the bite, the flying bison, but I really like to see how they're going to do like with the, with, with uh, Appa, with the, you know, uh, the the lion turtles, like all these uh, different animals that they're putting in the series, I, I like. I really like to see how they're gonna do that, and it, it, I'm really hoping that they they really get a good budget into doing this and doing it really uh, correctly in terms of the atmospheres of where they're going to do each like each uh, set for each location, and also you know obviously the animals, uh, the unique animals they got to do, and that was something that I think. Is going to also be a really good thing to to see too, especially the way CGI is these days now too. Absolutely, uh, I'm actually curious to see how the animals within the Avatar world will be done. Myself, um, they were cheaply put together in the movie, despite the movie having a massive budget. But I think with Netflix and their resources. I'm quite confident that they are going to capture the look of these animals. Obviously, they're going to have to use CG in some places, uh, mainly for uh, the flying creatures. Uh, they're going to have to, if they're not going to use animatronics, which I think is the most reasonable route to go uh, for some of the on-ground animals is just go with a mixture of puppets, animatronics, and or some digital touch-ups, while just having the uh, the flying creatures like the bisons, the, the flying turtles, all of that be computer generated, but really, you know, take their time with uh, putting together those digital assets because that that was kind of the fault of movies that we could tell all the effects uh, for the bending for the animals um, even Aang's glider we could tell it was painfully obvious it's CG so I'm hoping with this one 
they can just take their time and try and make it as uh, photorealistic as they can. Uh, but I, I'm very excited at the thought of seeing how they could do it. Yeah, absolutely, and um, it's uh, like I said, there's like a lot of potential, um, a lot of different characters. I'm, I'm, I'm really eager. I know it will be a while before we see her, but I'm really eager to see how they do, how they handle Toph Bay Fung. Obviously, she doesn't come until season two, but I really like to see how they do Toph Bay Fung because that would be that's really because she's blind and stuff like that. And it's like I really like to see where they're gonna go with that. Maybe they cast someone who actually is blind too. That would also be an interesting thing uh, to note as for an actor. Uh, they actually get a blind actor. In yeah, there. that would uh, would be a good. Um, uh, uh, I mean, it, they might just get a regular actor there, but I, but getting a, a blind, an actual blind actor in there might actually cause uh, cause legitimacy because it's you know Toph is a blind character, so maybe get a blind uh, actor uh, to be in there. Yeah, yeah, I, I get you. Um, I think that's just wishful thinking, uh, but it's something I would definitely be more appreciative. Of if they were to actually get a blind actor, uh, obviously they would have to uh, they they would have to have her really try and act her best without seeing what she's supposed to be pretending is there. Um, I think it could be very very interesting to 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 really see, uh, but. I, I think most likely they're not going to get a blind actor actress. I think they are going to get someone who definitely can capture that personality of Toph, and her being blind is just something that's either going to be done practically or uh, maybe done via special effects. I, I, I don't know, but uh, I, I admit that would be nice That'd be cool. for them to go that right. But I, I don't think they probably will go down um, that route. Yeah. But it's wishful thinking. Yeah, it's like you said, it's wishful thinking. But it would be kind of a cool touch-up if they were able to pull it off, though. Especially, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially for all yeah. the people that are liking that. Like, it would be a really good uh, for handicap and all that stuff, too. It would be kind of a good diversity move uh, to do. Of, of course, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I think it would be. It uh, would be very nice. And it would just be a big step up and how dedicated uh, this series is to being as close as it can to the original series in terms of yes, authenticity. Absolutely. absolutely, and that's what we want. That's what we want to see. We want to see the authenticity. We want these actor we want the actors to be portrayed as close as they possibly can to the, the origins of the actual cartoon uh, characters. Um, that were in, that were portrayed, uh, which is what we didn't get in the movie. <laughs> no. So yeah, um, yeah, um, so yeah, um, so we covered we covered a lot of um, different elements of potential plots and all that stuff. Um, is there any other things that you uh, uh, are looking forward to with it, other than other stuff that we've talked about, or? Uh. Other things I'm looking to, uh, I guess it would just have to be how they execute a, a whole season of the series in less than 13 episodes stretched over the course of an hour, because uh, I, I know we've definitely been saying that, and I know they've been, they've been thinking it too, is that with it being... Uh, with the episodes being stretched to a longer time slot, this definitely gives them the opportunity to uh, improve on what didn't need to be improved, or just add things that they couldn't add the first time around. I think the execution is something I'm really looking forward to because um, that that's the beauty of Avatar and, in a sense, Legend of Korra, is that both of these shows, because uh, they're under 13 episodes, well, uh, mainly with Korra, but with Avatar, because it's over, it's the standard 20 episodes, 
and it's 22 minutes, I, I'm just interested to see can they make this work to their benefit because I know a lot of diehard fans will definitely have, have agreed that the pacing of Avatar in anim- in its animation uh, form, it's perfect because of how they're able to utilize it so well. But with Netflix, it's a big jump. But uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how that's going to work. Uh, and I'm definitely, if anything, I'm just really excited and uh, wanting to know how this will be received because... Uh, again, it's it's definitely going to be something that a lot of people will have their eyes set on, and whether this show is good or bad, I just feel like it, it, it's taking a huge risk, and we don't know if it's going to pay off, but if it does pay off, it could avatar. definitely <laughs> lead to a lot of great things. Yeah. Oh yeah, we could probably get more Avatar, even more Avatar if this happens. Uh, if yeah, it good. yeah, no, uh, we could get more. Uh, we could get more Avatar. We could get a live action, live action core series. We could even get a new Avatar show that, or even is... another, even another series of Avatar: The Last Airbender, like another season uh, of it. Yeah, exactly. Because they were because they were supposed they were supposed to have a fourth series, mm-hmm. but they canceled it. Yeah, yeah. So I think with Netflix. That that's all. That's always the pro of being with Netflix is it's never a one and done. And I think fans will want more, uh, more Avatar because Nickelodeon, as you and I both have expressed in the past, Nickelodeon has unfortunately just shunned aside this series and buried it. Oh, they clearly, definitely did it with Korra, yeah. especially Korra got really it, screwed over. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, their interest in it is not there anymore. And I feel like Netflix can be there to pick up the pieces that we've been waiting years and years to see. So, you know, and what was also pretty good, I, I think a good indication of how well this is going to go is, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago, um, it was announced that Netflix would have all three seasons of the yes. original series that will be coming on their, in May. That will be coming in May. Yes, yes, on their platform. So that right there, I think that's a sign that maybe Netflix will try and do more Avatar, regardless if it's successful or not. Because again, uh, when when something when something like nostalgia prints money, you kind of have to do more of it. You can't just abandon it and uh, pretend that it isn't profitable anymore like Nickelodeon did. So that's really my biggest hope and 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 really what I and I know you and everyone else are looking forward to is the potential of having Avatar back uh, yes. for good this time and it uh, leading to many, many great things. Yes. Um, also, let's, uh, since we brought up Korra, too, do you think that they would cover in this uh, Avatar series, Netflix series, do you think that they would cover the origins of uh, of uh, of the Avatars like they did in Legend of Korra, or do you think they would just leave that out since that was only uh, introduced in Legends of Korra, even though technically that was the beginning births of Avatar to begin with, even though technically we never heard about it until Legends of Korra. Do you think they would uh, integrate that into the series, or do you think they would just kind of wait on that? I definitely think it's possible. It's up to Michael and Brian. Um, they're, they're the ones who are in charge of that. They're the ones who have full say at the end of the day when it comes to Avatar. Uh, from a business standpoint, I think Absolutely, I'd be interested in it because, again, uh, like like I just said, Avatar, it's limitless. You can make, uh, you, you can go back to the adventures with Aang, or you can re- go uh, to what's happening with Korra, or you can go all the way back before the both of them yeah, and Avatar show World. us um, <laughs> all these different... I mean, if there's one... I mean, you know me. Yeah. I would love to see a Legend of Korra. 
uh, because that show did get the, the, the wrong end of the stick by Nickelodeon. So I would love to see them cover Legend of Korra in the future, but I, I think I would also like to see if they were to do a show or a special on previous avatars, then the number one avatar that I would want them to cover is Kyoshi. Kyoshi. Because well, well, I, was just novel, kind of, I, I was just talking about like kind of them bringing it up during the last air, like when they're doing the Avatar The Last Airbender live action series. Would you think they would cover Avatar Wong in there rather than wait for a live action uh, Legend of Korra series uh, or something like that? Because obviously that wasn't brought up until Legends of Korra. But technically speaking, Avatar Wong was always the first Avatar based on what happened to Legend of Korra, even though we didn't know that in the Last Airbender. And I was wondering if like they would possibly cover that at some point in Last Airbender, but. I don't know, I mean, because yeah, obviously yeah. it's an hour, obviously it's our airtime, but it's like that's how that's wondering since since we, since we know who since we know Avatar Wong is now, I'm wondering if they would go back and and put him somewhere in Last Airbender because obviously Aang talks to his past lives uh, at some point and maybe they they show him um, in it. Do you think that would be a possibility? Um, that's kind of a yes or no question. <laughs> I, I think um, if they wanted to just stick with how they laid things out, if they wanted to stick with the uh, original uh, foundation timeline of where Avatar and Legend of Korra are, um, then I definitely think, no, I know, they would probably just cover Avatar 1 in Legend of Korra, but if they wanted to kind of start with a new clean slate, I guess, then they could uh, yeah. have an episode in the Airbender series where they do talk about Avatar Wong. Maybe they have a whole episode dedicated to him yeah. and that, to kind of uh, really be helpful advice to Aang. And, because that, that's that's kind of what they did with, with, um, with Avatar Roku. Yeah, uh, they they did. They definitely gave him a, that when they gave him his episode and they fleshed his character out of what where was he before he was the Avatar and where was he after he died. Yeah. So if they want to do, if they want to kind of reinvent that, then the best idea I guess would just to do a different Avatar uh, arc. In one episode, like just have Aang yeah. talk to uh, his previous uh, incarnations and have them tell their stories yeah. and, through the course of one episode. And maybe if it tracks well, maybe they'll expand further on it down the line if if they want to. Yeah, because I think it'd be a good idea. I think it'd be kind of a good idea because only because the Netflix episodes are supposed to be an hour, an hour long, and. Uh, when they were doing the series, I think it would fit perfectly for season three. Uh, it will, whatever season three will be considered as in the Netflix series, because obviously they have to space right. them out uh, in twelve episodes. But um, for season right. three, when they did the car, when they did the anime cartoon, um, obviously Aang, right before he was about to go after Fire Lord Ozai and uh, you know beat him and stuff like that. Uh, he was talking to all his past lies, as you remember. He was talking, well, not all of them, but he was uh, talking to most of them that we were seeing on screen. We were seeing, you know, we seen Roku, we seen Kyoshi, uh, we seen, uh, we even seen one that was an Airbender one. You know that, ad, you know, you know, because he didn't want to take a life. He didn't want to take a life, yeah. and she was telling him like, no, you know, for 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 Avatar, you can never do that. But I was wondering, like, if they could show Wong for that in this series, because it's like, you know, technically he's the first Avatar, so how is an Aang haven't ever talked to this guy? This is what I, my, my uh, whole thing is thinking. <laughs> uh, simple, man, because Michael and Brian probably didn't think of him at the time. Uh, well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying, but now, like, we know who he is, and it's like, you know, like how can he not, like, talk to I, him in this? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure when Aang died, he probably we did get to meet Avatar Wong. I, I don't know. But, uh, again, man, it, it's up in the air right now. It, it's debatable if they could do that. Uh, 
or if they should do that. In my opinion, I, 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 I wholeheartedly, uh, sorry, not wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly believe they, Michael and Brian should explore more of the avatars and definitely give them more layers, show us their backstories, and, and really just have their, their, their stories uh, push the narrative home on how Aang wa- doesn't want to be the Avatar yeah. that, that kills people. He doesn't even want to be the Avatar that has to do you just this, gave me another good idea. If it's necessary. You just gave me a good idea. They could actually, for the first episode, they could actually do buffs for a hundred years. Yeah, I, I would even think that'd be the most better uh, course of action because that's where the movie failed. The movie tried to literally be all of season one compacted into two hours, which was unfeasible and it it was uh and its execution as you know we all know it was terrible yes but with the show and it having an hour long runtime uh on on tv and essentially with netflix they have no ratings that, that with net, when you're on a streaming service there are no rules you get to do whatever you no want rules. you get to you you get to uh have whatever you want in there regardless if uh, you couldn't get away with it on a network television show. So I think that would be a good idea just to have the the, the episode start off, uh, the, the first maybe 10, 15 minutes start off with Aang finding out that he's the Avatar and showing his struggle and this burden he's now carried leading up to him running away uh, and getting frozen and then cut to a hundred years later and you introduce uh, Katara oh, and Sokka, Sokka and, and just all of that stuff. So that would be a good way to streamline it and make it easier for people to get attached to Aang early on because if I had to complain because I do think that was one of the biggest flaws of season one is that they did take so long to get us fully invested in Aang at as an avatar, because we didn't know his backstory, we didn't know the pressure he was under. We just knew he ran away, and he has been frozen in ice for over a hundred years. So he's kind of a fish out of water. So doing that would would would, would automatically it would set up Aang, and we would know him as a character in a short amount of time. Yeah. So I think that would be good. Uh, and I'm definitely glad uh, you brought that up. Yeah. I, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I would love to see that. Again, again, this is this is all this is all going to depend on what Michael and Brian want to do because I'm part of me doesn't want them to just do a shot for shot retelling of the first three books. I do kind of want them to stick to that foundation but and add, but that. add stuff to it. Yeah, exactly. It. But do things differently. Make it make this unique because uh, that's the one thing. A re- again, this is Disney. There's no bigger example than Disney. You don't want to do a remake of the same thing, shot for shot, line for line, you know, frame for frame, just in live action because it's pointless. It doesn't make it unique. And if you took away those elements, it's just not interesting yeah and it's, it's not it's, timeless. It's, it's me it's meeting in the middle it's meeting in the middle is you want it to be you want it to be a, a retelling but you don't want it to be 100 percent the same thing you want to add stuff that yeah. you couldn't add to the movie or the cartoon or whatever uh that you couldn't add and you could put it in live action and kind of so oh you yeah, know yeah. The, you know this thing that we didn't really kind of address well here here's what right here we're addressing it now <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That that I would def I would want them to take the Legend of Korra approach because that's what was so good about Legend of Korra is that the first season did start off in in kind in Aang's shadow, but over time the show defined itself and it and it proved that it wasn't just connected to Aang. It was its own thing, but it still existed after Aang's time. So that's what I really think they should do again for this series, except just 
have it be kind of both. Like, have it be a good, have it still be Avatar from the, the show that we grew up with, but have it be different, have it be unique enough to where if you took away those elements and you just look at this show as its own thing, then it could be good and it could stand uh, proudly yeah. next to the original. Yeah, and then also too adding adding longer fights for sure, or even fights that were cut, as we all know too. Because like remember the uh, Azula, Azu the Azula versus Zuki fight was cut. We didn't know what happened for a long time because, uh, you know, she obviously you know took her clothes and you know invaded Ba Sing Se. Uh, you know, you could probably show that fight. You could probably show that fight since we already know who wins and who loses in that fight. You could show that, and you could show how she she does it, how she wins. Two. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, no, man. Other than that, I've got nothing. Yeah. If, yeah. Uh, like I said, it's really good and it's really promising, and I'm hoping that a lot of stuff we've talked about in this video is gonna. Uh, happen to some degree and mm -hmm. hopefully we get uh ho hopefully it is really successful it, because i want to see more maybe we in the future we get like you know the comic books being you know i know uh dante had been you know talking about possibly having those comic books animated into a series uh uh you know into a series that would be something good to do and i'm really hoping that something something in terms of cartoons like comes out of this not just like just for live action more live action stuff but you know, we get more Avatar, you know, in cartoons or even more comic books. I, I'm really hoping. And so I'm really hoping that this is going to be a lot better than the movie. Uh, and I hope this I hope this becomes a home run hit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, very, very good. Um, is there anything else uh, you have or do you think we, think we got everything we wanted to cover? Yeah, I think I've talked about everything I've wanted to talk about, man. Uh, yeah, and I think I think we I think we covered everything. I, you know, uh, I'm still curious about the actors and who they're going to to cast because I'm trying to think of anybody that could uh, possibly fill those shoes. But at the end of the day, I'm still hoping that they they get the right characters for the depictions of the characters in the cartoon series, obviously. But uh, but mostly, I think we covered everything. Um, also, I just want to put it out there: anybody that's watching this video, if there's anything that youth would like to see from the last airbender live action series uh you can comment that down below uh and if you agree with some of our stuff um let us know uh, let us know too um but uh i think th i think that's about it um uh guys uh make sure to check out uh, the jedi benders uh youtube uh channel um um and also um comment rates if you like this video my other videos uh please subscribe uh, if you're a new subscriber, please subscribe. Uh, and also, if you are a previous subscriber, uh, also make sure to check the, uh, click the notification bell because that's how people get the latest contents uh, for it. Um, and uh, I think that's about it, guys. Um, I'm the SS Ultimate Goku. And uh, uh, Jedi Bender, any final words? Uh, yeah, thank you all for watching, and, uh, we'll see you for the next one. Yep, and I'm out. Peace.